What's going on? God bless everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you. Support Pastor G, Pastor Gary Morris. Welcome to Berean Christian Fellowship. Welcome to Sunday service. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, your presence. You're pressing toward the, the mark of his high calling. Your diligence. Uh, just, I love you guys. My church body, every door that's open preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, none of those rich truths of the, of the Bible. God bless you this morning. How is everyone doing? I pray everyone is doing well. Uh, things are looking well. Keep a lot of families in, in prayer. I talked to Pastor Thor Withers. He had a Bible study the other day, and he's got some friends um, dealing with, they, they lost their son at the younger age. I think it was 24, 25 of a heart attack. Just keep a lot of families in prayer. A lot of uh, things going on around us. Um, so pray for the Withers family. Pray for the Harris again, and the Nelson family as we travel to Chicago this uh, next week. But just um, be concerned about your loved ones. There are a lot of people that are going through some trying times right now. And it's just on my heart before I got into today's service for you to, uh, to encourage you, to reach out, to be encouraging, but to make sure we're doing it the way the Lord sees fit, that we are being uh, very loving, very kind with our words, uh, very diligent, very intentional on how we love on one another, communicate to one another, and that we are up, up, uplifting the body of Christ. So please keep a lot of these families who are going through some trying times right now um, uh, in prayer. Um, a lot of uh, different families actually on that um, on that prayer call from Thursday. Um, there's a few families in there dealing with the loss of loved ones. There's going to be a lot of funerals happening in the next couple of weeks, which you can say, oh man, that sounds bad. But when the Lord calls you home and you're in his presence, we might miss the person, but I think it's selfish for us not to say glory to God because now that person is at rest and they are in the, they're where I want to be there in his presence. Amen. So we are still in John chapter six. We are doing a lot of stuff in John. You guys know how I feel about John. I've been in this John on this John thing because John writes uh, just so in emphatic. He's strong. He's he's pushing uh understand so you realize who the messiah is and he's really confirming the deity of christ and how he articulates his experience with christ as being an apostle and being his friend right he wasn't just an apostle he was his friend we are in john chapter six we're going to be at john chapter six um at the 22nd verse we're going to go and said um uh, go to about the 30th verse so john 6 22 all the way to verse 30 i'm going to say all right um ooh, excuse me so let's open up in a word, word of prayer then i'm gonna sneeze heavenly father lord god we thank you we thank you for your word we thank you for your way we thank you for your uh, the blood we thank you father lord god for your grace that rests upon us forgive us of our sins not just against thee but against our neighbor Teach us to love like you. Teach us to walk like you. Teach us to be angry and sin not. Teach us, Father Lord God, to have a standard. Teach us to search the scripture, the scriptures thoroughly, and get rightful understanding. Not be swayed by those uh, outside, but be swayed by the Holy Spirit, which is inside, that we gain understanding. That we study to show uh, ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. A worker does not need to be ashamed, and we are never going to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. To so everyone on the side of my voice in Berean Christian Fellowship, Father, Lord God, we thank you for this body. We thank you for the believers. We thank you for the blessing, and we thank you for the blood. To those who are hurting right now, the loss of a loved one, encourage them through the Holy Spirit. Let them know that they are resting in the bosom of the Lord, that they are at rest, they are at peace, and we can celebrate their life. And for that glorious king we give you the praise honor and glory for that father lord god we worship thee for you gave the perfect sacrifice you sent your son to redeem us when we could not save ourselves in jesus name we pray and give thanks amen amen and amen john chapter six people we're still in john john chapter six we're going to keep running through john john has john is like the, the everlasting barbecue it's just more meat more meat more meat more meat more meat all right john chapter six King, New King James Version, you know I like to read New King James Version, right? John 6, New King James Version says this. On the following day when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one which his disciples entered and that Jesus had not entered the boat with those disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias, other and near the, the place where uh, they ate bread 
after the Lord had given thanks, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into the boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because of the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we make works with that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the word, the works of God, that you believe in him who you sent. Therefore they said, What sign will you perform that we may know it and believe you? What work will you do that is john 6 22 through 30 around 31. recap i know i love to recap we talked about the marriage wedding the wine talked about a lot of things and we're up right now to john 6 and he had fed the five thousand and after he fed the five thousand um i talked about this two sundays ago he fed the five thousand and then uh, after he feeds the five thousand and they depart to go and rest the disciples go to the other side and that's where jesus walks on water and um they think it's a ghost once he gets in the boat they're automatically to the other side i talked about what did you come to see because it seems it, uh, at the end of um the end of verse 14 it says that they were looking for the prophet and i told you guys that was the, the prophet they were looking for in deuteronomy 18 right because i said what did you come out to see because they still had a miss uh a misguided understanding of the Messiah and they still were looking for something physical. That's why they called him the prophet here. And you see here after they called him prophet, when they got to the other side, they called him rabbi. Same people. Same people. So when they caught when when they when they thought he was the prophet, they said this is truthfully the prophet, once um he got to once they got to the other side, they called him rabbi. So realize this now. So this is after um the disciples go on the other side and they um, get there and Christ meets them in the boat and they Im immediately once he's in the boat they were still a ways off from getting to where they were going to but by the time he gets in the boat he by the power of God power in Christ Jesus they're automatically on the other side just that quick <laughs> bam okay so they're there now this is the next day after all that occurs they're already on the other side Look what happens here with John documents on the following day when the people came standing on the other side They saw that there was no other boat there except the one which his disciples had entered Now look at what it says They they, um, um, they were I'm sorry When the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one which his disciples had entered and that Jesus had entered the boat had not entered the boat with his disciples but his disciples had gone away alone however other boats came what were they doing so they already thought he was a prophet because remember now i told you these men they're trying to sit around kind of like how david had men sit around him in case war popped off and he was going to be this physical king they wanted to be ready hey you got an army you ready to take this from rome and be from under caesar and do all this kind of stuff just in case you are ready to do this because we see you got a little juice because remember, I talked about this, that his name was hot. Jesus' name was spreading, right? So they said, in case you need an army, boom, I'm ready to volunteer. We got 5,000 men right here. We can get the uprising going because there had been many uprisings before. Remember that. That's one of the things that people said God talked about. Well, you know, there were uprisings by this guy and uprisings by this guy, and they didn't really amount to nothing. And he told them, hey, if he was really anything for us to be worried about, if he uprises, he'll be successful. But if he doesn't, he'll pass away like everything else. Remember that. So they're at the ready. And the problem is, after they ate and they went home, they came back the next day looking for him. And they went looking for him. They said, hey, the disciples left in the boat, but Jesus didn't go with him. So where, where did he go? They started looking for him. And they went where? He, they went. The first thing I want you to re re realize, there are three things that are that's good, that's going to be discussed here today. They went looking for their last physical fix. They went looking for their last physical fix, right? Their mentality is still trying to figure out how they're going to look at this Jesus 
first he's like, you know, he, is he a prophet? Is he that prophet that was re referenced in Deuteronomy 18? They're looking. So they went back to uh, the place where they got their last physical fix. And a lot of the people that are trying to come to the Lord or dealing with the church, they're trying to get a physical fix. They're trying to address a, a physical issue going on with them that's actually rooted in a spiritual problem. Understand this about us as, I'm sorry, understand this about unbelievers, okay? When the Bible talks about us being dead to sin, and we are drowned, not drowned, but we are drowned, and things at the end, but the way Paul writes it, we are dead spirits walking around. We, are, we don't know anything about our spiritual God. We are dead spirits, and we are being led by our flesh until we accept Christ as Savior, and our spirits are made alive, and we are a, a, a living soul. But realize this. There is nothing within us that's necessarily seeking him in the beginning because we're dead. A dead man can't go get anything. A dead man can't go looking for nothing. But what happens is, this dead soul, this, this, this deadness that I had before I came to Christ, was in a place where I was available to God, making it of, uh, 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 introducing himself to where he can put life back into me. And... The problem with Israel was they were still walking around dead physically and dead spiritually, and they were looking for a, um, a revival in the physical versus a revival in the spiritual. They missed the whole point. They had God all the time, but because they were dead in their sins, they kept trying to look for something to fix a physical problem. And their issue was very physical. God told them, hey, listen, the other nations have physical kings. You have a spiritual king that has more power than any physical king. And he told them, hey, when you want a physical king, he's going to put physical burdens on you. But when you have a spiritual king, all he's going to do is put spiritual lessons on you. But as they see spiritual things happening and people getting delivered, even the man uh, right before this, when he feeds the 5,000 at the pool of Bethesda, that that man is back in the synagogue after his physical healing takes place, the man realized it wasn't about my physical issue. I have to glorify God. So as soon as he's healed, he's doing what? He's back in the synagogue. So even the woman at the well, which was right before the man at the pool of Bethesda, she goes and she ministers about Jesus. She's spreading the gospel. She's saying, hey, let me tell you about a man who told me all about myself. Not my physical issue, but how I needed to be redeemed in my spirit. I was a, I, I told you, the woman, the woman was a, a cultural reject, whereas the man in the pool of Bethesda, let me slow down here, was a uh, uh, cultural de deject. He was dejected because of his uh, disability. She was rejected because she was a Samaritan. So here, the people go back to where they got their physical fix. He's saying, hey, I gave you a physical fix just so because I, I, I felt bad for your situation. But I'm trying to give you a spiritual answer to what you really, really need. So their first problem was they kept looking for a physical fix. Let's look at verse 24. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats. Where were they at? They were at the place where they ate bread the day before and where Jesus had given thanks. Now, they saw a spiritual thing occur. They saw a spiritual thing occur. Right? Jesus gave thanks. Jesus gave thanks and blessed few fish and some bread and multiplied it. They saw a miracle. He didn't just automatically do it. He didn't... Um, make manna come down from 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 heaven the way god did because the bigger issue was they were confusing moses had given the blessing when moses never gave the blessing he had to teach them hey when he says i'm the bread of life that hey listen god gave that blessing moses might have been his mouthpiece but that blessing came from god moses did not do that so he's trying to show them by giving thanks to god first before the move before multiplication even occurred right um He's trying to show them, hey, listen, the multiplication only occurs when God is honored. Yes, your physical needs were met, but you saw glory happen. You saw 
miracle happen. You saw power of God happen. I took something that wasn't supposed to be useful and made it a blessing to all. So you witnessed that, but you still coming back for a physical fix. And a lot of us come to church. You know, I, I always give the example that my one of my old mentors gave Dwight when he was dealing with um, his sinuses. Right? Um, I apologize. I got an alarm going off. Um, that um, basically um, he had really, really bad allergies. Really, really bad allergies. And we went to go see our friend Brian, and Brian um, gave him a lot of diet changes. But another man across the hall, he gave a whole lot of medical advice and wrote prescriptions. And when Dwight asked him, why'd you do that? I thought we were friends. He said, hey, listen, I get paid to treat him. You are my friend. I have to heal. The church is the same way of dealing with people's physical issues, right? They're dealing with physical issues. The church likes to... Uh, the modern day church is not showing you how to grow spiritually. They're they're helping. They're putting band aids on physical issues so you keep coming back versus teaching you how to um, grow spiritually. It's kind of like that old adage, right? Um, if I give you a fish, you eat for the day. But if I teach you how to fish, you can live for life. They have gotten into mending men versus healing and changing men. That was the call of evangelism. Go out, preach the gospel, show them Christ, make them from dead spirit to life first. That's the call of evangelism, is to change a life. But that don't bring money into the bank if people are growing spiritually and they go out the door to evangelize. These so-called pastors want money inside the church, so they keep addressing you at the physical level, but never hit you at the spiritual level. And the same mentality that Christ was dealing with, with the traditions of men, with the Pharisees and the church leadership, we're still dealing with today. Trying to address a physical issue that has nothing to do with the fact that God's trying to get you to a, 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 a better spiritual plateau. So these people go back to where their physical issue was, was met when God is trying to show them, hey, there's more to this thing than what you ate. So the first thing that they did was they were looking for a physical fix. So look at what they do. The man that fed me yesterday ate here and we don't know what happened to him. So we might not know where he is, but we know where his disciple is. So we can go follow the disciples. So they got in the boat, and that boat, where did it go? Yet? Oh, they went up to the, uh, the other side. Okay, we can get some boats. We can go that way too. So look what happens here. Jesus answered that. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Um, when they when they when they found him on the other side, they were like, "Hey, now remember what I just said to you earlier? Before, in chapter six, um, they said this is the prophet. This is truly a prophet. Look at how they address him now. Right? They found him, and they said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi." Where did you go? So now he went from being a prophet. Well, now you're a rabbi. You're just a spiritual. You're a spirit. It's a little a respect, but they're saying, Rabbi, when did you get over here? And he looks at them and he realizes, I mean, God already knew this as, as being God, Christ Jesus. But he's saying, hey, listen, I'm telling you, you're not seeking me because of the signs, um, but because you ate. You're only looking for me because I met your physical need yesterday. And you're, you're hoping for a physical resolution to get restored to being a great nation. You're missing it. The only reason why you're over here is because you had a fish sandwich. And I'm trying to get you past the fish sandwich. I'm not trying to feed your stomach. I'm trying to feed your soul. And he says to hey, listen. You don't seek me because of the signs you saw, but you seek me because you ate yesterday. It says in verse uh, 26, uh, most surely I saw, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Look at what he tells them after this. Do not labor for food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the son of man gives you because God, the father has set his seal on him. He was saying, hey, listen. Stop looking to work for this thing. Stop looking for a physical answer to this thing. Stop looking, right? He says, this is not the, the gift that I have for you. You can't work for this. Look at what he said. Do not labor for food, which he said, you're trying to equate getting in the kingdom by some tasks. I'm trying to tell you that the, 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 while you're working hard to get this physical thing, 
I'm trying to give you something that gets a spiritual thing. He says, the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man says, I'm going to give it to you because God the Father told me to, and he set the seal on me. Look at how they respond. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? They're thinking physical because they're still trying to redeem the kingdom of Israel, right, to prominence. What we got to do to get this thing, what do we got to do to, to, you know, to, you know, back then in Jeremiah's time, we, they built walls and we built the city, did that. So what do we got to do to get this thing back to the way it was? Because they're still answering him physically from a physical mindset. What work are we going to do? And she said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. That's it. You can't work this and get, you can't work this physically and get a spiritual deliverance. It takes faith. It takes believing. It takes something, a spiritual change within you. Because you, you keep trying to equate the success to something that you physically got to do. I'm telling you, the success that comes, the blessing that comes is because a spiritual change has happened to you and you grow spiritually. So the things you do physically don't have a physical intention, but a spiritual intention. You feed the homeless because it's a spiritual thing, because you love the discipline of, of what God told you in his ordinances, because you know that you are supposed to love your neighbor, because you, you, you spread the gospel because you don't want someone else to be lost. You come in from a spiritual perspective, not a physical one saying, well, if I save them, I'm not going to get in trouble. Because remember, the scripture teaches us. It teaches us. Many are going to come before the throne. He's going to say, depart from me for whatever you get. They're going to say, but didn't we cast our demons in your name? Didn't we feed the poor? Didn't we do He said, no, I don't know you. Because you were so stuck on the physical, you missed the spiritual. You never got it. You never got to know me. There are people out there. There are churches out there right now. They have people in them. And it's going to church is a duty. It's a task. We I grew up going to church. We just going to go. No spiritual growth, no tie to the church. It's a thing to do. I'm going to donate to help the homeless. I'm going to donate to this youth program. I'm going to do this. And they're doing good things. And none of it's going to help them spiritually grow closer to God. There's no time spent in, spread in prayer, no time spent in his word, none of that. He's trying to tell them, it, it, if you're doing it to be a blessing to somebody, it's one thing. If you're just doing it to get it done, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. And he says to them, so the first problem was um, they were looking for their physical fix. The second problem was they were lacking, um, they were lacking understanding of his presence. They were looking for a physical fix, now they're lacking understanding of his presence. They were lacking understanding because he's saying to them, stop trying to think that this thing is going to be worked out physically when I'm trying to show you that it takes a, a spiritual mindset to understand where I'm coming from. That's why they couldn't understand a lot of the parables because they kept trying to figure out physically what was he trying to say? Well, he's trying to tell them, man, this is a spiritual thing. I'm the confirmation of scripture. I'm the confirmation of prophecy. I'm meeting that need. But you're missing the point. You keep trying to, you keep trying to restore Israel from a physical perspective. I'm trying to restore Israel's spiritual connection to their God. That's what I'm trying to do. And you're not getting it. He says to them, uh, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in whom he sent. You just got to, you, you, you got to believe. You got to believe. And realize this, one, one of the biggest points that the Jews had, they were very bigoted in their mentality. Because even in the Old Testament, a lot of the Old Testament dictates and says that the God of Israel was going to be the God of nations, which means it included the Gentiles, and they didn't want that to happen. When Paul was put in jail, it wasn't because Paul was a murderer and he was converted by his experience with Christ and spent that three years with Christ and became an apostle. He was convicted because he was out there preaching the fact that the Jews and the Gentiles were going to be one church, and they didn't want that to happen. As soon as he came back and said, they accused him of having an actual Gentile in the church, they had him locked up. All right? They didn't want... They were some of the biggest, biggest. They wanted God all to themselves without being obedient to God. They wanted to, to lay claim to his power, but not uh, being attached to his purpose. So when it came to even someone like, like Paul, you know, the other apostles were cool because they weren't talking about Gentiles. But when he talked about that one church, which was talked about all through the Old Testament, when it talks about being a nation, Isaiah talked about it. Um, uh, multiple different, some of the minor prophets talked about it. 
it was referenced that God was going to be the God of all nations. They didn't want to hear that, especially when he was having churches with Jews and Gentiles in them as one. They didn't want to hear that. They wanted the power of God to go in front of them without honoring the purpose and the presence of God. And he says to them, you just got to believe in me, believe in the Messiah, but believe in me from a spiritual understanding. I'm, not, I'm going to do redeem Israel to some physical prominence. I'm going to re redeem your relationship, your physical prominence. No more priest, no more none of that, right? It's going to be just me and you in fellowship as one. And he said to them, and now here's the crazy part. After everything we see, right? They were uh, looking for a physical fix. They were lacking understanding of his presence. Look at what they do after this. Therefore, they said to him, what sign will you perform? Look at what happened in the same context right before this. He says up here in um, verse 20. Now, this is verse 30. I just read. Therefore, they, they said to him, what sign will you perform? In verse 26, he just said to them, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs. Why are you asking me for another sign? You saw me give thanks unto God and multiply and people healed. Lame people. People who had missing limbs restored. You saw a bunch of signs and you came for a fish sandwich and you're asking me for a sign again? That shows their ignorance and their misunderstanding and their mis that their passions were misdirected. How are you going to ask me for a sign when I just gave you one? How are you going to ask me for a sign when you just were a part of a miracle? How are you going to ask? How are you going to ask? So we see here. They were lacking, they, they, I'm sorry, they were looking for their physical fix with the first problem. Then they were lacking the understanding of his presence. Now look at what they're doing now. They're lurking. They're lurking for his power. They're just lurking around for his power. They're sitting around waiting to see something else. Something, the next big thing. Remember I told you before, his name was hot in the streets. He, he just said to them, I showed y'all a sign and y'all didn't get it. Now you're going to ask me for it again? Guys, this is... Four verses later, in 26, it says, I showed you a sign. In 30, they asked him for another one. Do, do we do God like that sometimes? We see so many great, wonderful things from him. We get understanding from him. We, 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 God makes a move in our lives. And we say, okay, God, now what's next? Excuse me? Well, that was good, but you know, what's next? I just... I just saved your life. I, I, I just delivered you from such and such. I just showed you in my in my word just the the, the, the power of, of the Holy Spirit. And you you you're like, oh okay. Well, what's next? You know how bad that has to feel as a parent when you have rewarded your, or you give your child something. They're like, okay, what else you got? It's like Christmas, right? I used to whew, dealing with children, not children, but children. When you buy your kid a bunch of gifts. And the tree under the tree is packed. They got presents and presents and everything is stacked up. And they open up, oh, dad, this is good. Oh, mommy, this is great. Oh, look at this. And they get done and go, okay, well, what else is there? You just opened up 30 gifts and you're asking for more? We get offended as parents when our children do, do, do that. So imagine when God is like, I just, dude, I took a couple of fish and some, I made... I, I, I made the best fish sandwich you ever had from giving thanks to God. You've watched people get healed and you're going to ask me what's next? What's the next sign? You see all that and you're saying, well, yeah, but show me something else. Are you serious? Look at what he says. Hey, listen, therefore they said to him, I got to laugh, but I read it. What sign will you perform then? What sign um, um, he said, what sign, it, so not ask for something specific, right? Look at it. What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe you? So let me make sure that I'm understanding what, what's going on here. The sign that you did before, all these other signs, yeah, we saw them, but we need something different that we may see and believe you. So what we saw already wasn't enough. Give us something new so that we can see and believe. Like, like, just do something right now. Are you serious? They said, what? 
sign are you going to do so we can see it and believe you? He was like, and I had to think, you know, I'm going to use my spiritual imagination and a little humor here and say, I don't get to think to himself like, if, if you can't believe off what I did before, how are you going to believe me now? I'm on the other side. You don't even know how I got here. You know I didn't go in no boat. And it, there, you're asking me for another sign? Are you serious? <laughs> what he says, that we may see it, believe you. Uh, and, and, and this is where I was talking about where they still were associating Moses with doing one thing versus God doing it. Our fathers ate manna in the desert. It is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. They were thinking that, uh, again, they misinterpreted because God, they looked what Jesus says to them in verse 32. I should have kept going. He said to them, Moses, assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. He's saying, y'all got it twisted. Moses never gave y'all, Moses never gave your, your, your ancestors that bread. God gave them that bread. Moses was just a mouthpiece. That's what I was saying earlier. They had that mindset that it was a physical thing. God gave them that bread. Moses didn't do nothing for that. And he's, and he's telling them again now. Look at what he says to them. Our fathers uh, uh, they said uh, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus says to them, I, I'm telling you, Moses didn't give it to you. But my father gave it to you. Now I'm, he's trying to give you living bread. He who comes out from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, give us this bread. And Jesus said to him, I am the bread, the way, and the life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. I'm telling you, y'all have seen all that, and you still don't get it. And a lot of us still live the same way. God has done some miraculous things in our lives, and we still don't get it. Because we're trying to associate physical things with spiritual principles. Two big disconnects. Two big disconnects. What happens in the spiritual realm, and what happens in the physical realm. And I think a lot of that people lack because they're still walking around in a dead spirit because they have not truly accepted Christ and not just accepted Christ, but they have to, they have not repented. Salvation is, is, is more than just, you know, I said this uh, last Sunday, you can't just love God and God will love you. That's not salvation. Check me on it. It's not. Salvation is repentance, a turning away from your sinful lifestyle and now chasing after God. And seeking his will, seeking his way, and studying his word. I can love a lot of things, but I'm not going to pour my life into them. But when I aggressively pursue something and desire something, and it's trying to bring about a change, that's where my passions are. Your passions have to be toward God, not just your affections. Your spirit has to thirst after him. You never want to be the way you used to be. You never want to be your old man. That's why the scripture teaches us your old man's passed away. All things have become new. You are a new creature. That means that your passions have now changed from what your flesh wanted to what your spirit desires. To what your God desires of you. Not what you want from God, but what you want to do for God. And they were not getting it. He says... You know, I'm trying to give y'all the bread of life and y'all still don't get it. Y'all not going to believe no matter what I do. You're not. God had came down from heaven and gives life. He said to them, look, they said, give us this bread always. He said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you, you have seen me and you still don't believe. All my father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out for I have come down from heaven not to do my will but the will of him who sent me this is the will of the father he who sent me that all uh, I'm sorry lost my place here the will of the father who sent me that all uh, of all he has given me I should lose nothing but I should raise it up in the last day. All that he has given me. Remember what I said about being a dead spirit? If you're dead, you can't get up and go pursue after anything. Right? God is, and so he said, all that God has given me, all those that God has given that, that chance to. And we're not going to get into the predestination portion. That's a whole Bible lesson on that. That's just too much time to preach on. Because there is this misconception out there that God 
the uh, God doesn't have enough power. God looked into time and saw that you weren't worth it. That's how he knew that you weren't going to choose him. No, 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 no. God knew that everyone was going to hear the gospel, but he already knew who was going to say yes and who was going to say no. But there are some people out there that, as is it to say, well, the only reason why God knows is because he saw it. No, God is all powerful God. God does not exist in time. Time does not restrict God. We live in time. He just he just is. We are in time. He is just is. So he already understood. He already saw the beginning and the end. So all those that he gave are those that were chosen. Because those that were chosen changed their lives. But he's saying after he, he says to them, y'all still have seen what the father has sent through me. And y'all still don't believe. So what's the point? I've got to get to the cross. I understand what y'all saying. But understand this. You were looking for that physical fix. You were looking for that physical fix. You were lacking understanding when you were in my presence. And now you are here lurking trying to see what other what power that I have. Because now you you want that bread, but you don't want the spiritual bread. You still you still want that. You're still talking about manna that Moses had. You're still trying to get your stomach filled. And he's trying to teach them here. He's saying, hey, listen. There's more important things here. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that all that he has given me should not perish. And I will raise them in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone sees the Son and believes in him and may have everlasting life and I will raise them up in the last day. And they still complained because he said he was the bread right after that. They complained because he said he was the bread of life. First you asked me for a sign after you saw the sign. I tell you that I am the sign and you still complain. You, 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 ever, you ever known somebody that, 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 that does that? Even at, you ever been at a restaurant and you got a person, you know, they get their food and it's done exactly, but they find something to complain about. But this is what you ask for. But they find something to complain about. I will feel guilty doing that to God. God, I asked you for this, but I'm going to find something to complain about it within it. So I have an expectation to get something else out of it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We see here the problem with man, even man today. Still seeking a physical fix for a spiritual problem. Witnessing a spiritual miracle and still looking for a physical resolution. They were missing the boat. Missed the boat completely. Missing everything that Christ doing. He was saying, what, you asked me for a sign? Like, what you saw wasn't good enough already? You want another one? And then I tell you that I am the sign and then he, you're going you're to complain about that too. There's no pleasing you because your mindset is not right. And there are some people out there that they're going to hear the gospel and their mind says it's just not going to be right. They, they, and, and that's how certain churches are getting over because they're, oh, um, they're preaching physical resolutions from a spiritual God. They're, spe they're preaching, oh, just you bless me with 500, he'll give you 5 million. I'm a this and I'm a that and God speaks to me right now. He's telling me this is what you do. If you if you send me $50 for this cloth that I slept on last night, God will bless you and you'll be a millionaire next year. Speaking to everybody's physical need. A spiritual God is going to address their physical need. Nothing about their spiritual need. A lot of churches, I mean, they're out there just and they get their people are going there by the droves. Tell people, oh, God uh, broke the law for you because he sent his and all kind of craziness giving them a physical fix to a spiritual problem and that was the problem with Israel way back then and that's the that's the problem with Israel when they were dealing with Christ and that's the problem with us uh, as a church today we got to realize what God is trying to give us has nothing to do with what we're dealing with in this world for we are not of this world we're just in this world we're passing through but spiritually we have to be made alive we have to look to God for true understanding press toward the mark do spiritual work 
get spiritual understanding through understanding his word, spending time in prayer, spending time uh, fasting in the Holy Spirit, spending time studying him through his word, through these 66 books. And we'll understand how to be great evangelizers of the gospel out to a sin sick world. Amen. God bless y'all. Let's close out the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the power to redeem a dead soul. Of the power to redeem someone who is spiritually dead. The power, Father, Lord God, that we don't need signs and wonders. We just need to hear from you. We need to be in your presence to have a life-changing moment with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Help us, Father, Lord God. Help us to seek your will and your way. Help us to study to show ourselves approved. Help, to help us to be the church that you want us to be. Help us to be the bride that the bridegroom wants. Help us, Father, Lord God, that iron sharpens iron and that we seek your will on the way to every family who's dealing with loss of a loved one, who's dealing with tragedy right now, or just dealing with sickness in their body. Let them know that the answer to that situation is a spiritual call to you, that everything we do, Father Lord, God needs to be honoring to your name, that we need to be sincere in our press towards you, Father Lord God, and that we need to be, Father Lord God, diligent, diligent, in being vessels of the gospel. Touch everyone on the side of my voice right now, Father Lord God, that they see your will in your way. Give us journeys, mercies, and traveling mercies, Father Lord God, to everyone who is dealing with the situation in the family, Father Lord God, and just let your peace continue to rest upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Hey, you want to support the ministry? Check on the screen, check on the screen, check on the screen. We have uh, PayPal and text to give and I think I want to say either Tithely or Give the Fly, one of the two. I keep forgetting, the I get the two confused. But please support the ministry. We can keep giving you great content and um, the good word of God, the good news coming out there. But every Sunday, you know what I do? I have communion. I have communion. Um, and then I'm going to talk to those who are watching who, um, well, let me, let me do that right now before I do communion. If there's someone who's watching this, you've gotten this, it was shared. It's on um, one of the YouTube channels or someone shared this with you. Getting close to God is not a, a prayer doesn't fix it. It's a conversation and a turning point in your life. So if you're, if you hear me right now, stop what you're doing, get away all the distractions, turn off the TV and things like that. Stop the car and talk to God. You say this to God it's in the a, in a sincerest way that you can. I repent of my sins. I, I know that I'm a sinner, God, and I repent. I know I was wrong. I was dead in my trespasses and transgressions. I was a sinner. I was a wretch undone. I was dirty, and I don't want to live like that no more. Clean me up, Lord. I believe, God, in your son, Jesus. I believe that you sent him. I believe that he came in this world, that he preached the gospel, and that he was crucified for my sins, that his blood redeems me, and that he rose again on the third day, and that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to get to you, God, is through him. I believe in his gospel. I believe in who he is to me, and I need the Holy Spirit in me. Come into my heart, Lord. Come to me. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in me, and let me change my life. Show me. Let me live a repentant life, Father God. Help me to walk the way you want me to walk. Get me into a Bible-believing church, Lord. Get me to a place where I can be a usable vessel for the kingdom. And I give you the praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You've made that statement openly to God now make the actions follow up with it get into his word get into a Bible believing church cut off that old lifestyle cut off the, the old dead weight that people used to carry around yourself and look and see what God has for you and I promise you I promise you it's not going to be easy it's not going to be all money and, and butterflies and, but God will be with you every step of the way whether you are a blessing or you are whether you are in a blessing or being in a bothered situation, God's going to be in both. Amen? Amen. Now we can do communion. Now we can do communion. Right? So I do communion every Sunday because my word teaches me that as often as I gather together, as we gather together, this do remembrance of him. Alright? Here we go. Bread. Host the right hand. Here we go. 
the br this bread symbolizes the body of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was broken and beaten and bruised for me. This I do in remembrance of thee. And the cup. This wine is a symbol of the blood that was shed on Calvary for the remission of my sins. The perfect blood from the perfect God for a wretch like me. This I do in remembrance of thee. That's communion, fam. That's our Sunday service, y'all. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Thank y'all for joining me. Please have a great week. Um, please make sure you understand the reason for the season. We're celebrating Christ's birth. Um, this is not about uh, buying gifts, but understanding the gift. Um, but with all that being, being said, thank y'all for joining me. If you have any questions, hit us up on most of your social media at Berean CFGA. That's the YouTube or Facebook, whatever. Berean CFGA. Show us a message in the inbox. Or hit me up at GaryMorris.org or the church up at BereanChristianFellowship.org. Or you can even check out some of our uh, products and our merch that we have at uh, GraceGearOnline.com. It's great. GraceGearOnline is all together.com. All right. Thank you for joining me. It's your boy, Pastor G. God bless you. God keep you. Have a wonderful weekend. Get out there. Enjoy this fall weather. Go break up some leaves. Go do something. You know what I'm saying? Get out there. Get your yard tight. And I'm. I'll, uh, I gotta do it myself, so that's why I brought it up. But God bless you, God keep you, your boy Pastor Jigan. I'm going, y'all take care, have a good one. God bless you, take care, y'all. Happy afternoon.